What's up everybody? Have you ever been told that you're about to go on holiday as a kid and you gotta go pack your bag and so you go over and you start shoving things in there and you're like, okay, it's full now. I can't put anything more. It's impossible. My bag is already so full. And then your mom comes in and she manages to put 10,000 other things in there. Yeah, so this is kind of what I feel like when I think about DNA storage. So DNA is, is such a long thing. Your DNA is two meters long, right? The DNA of a single nucleus, a single cell, right? You're made up of billions of these cells. Now, a single cell in a, in a single nucleus, your DNA is two meters long. That's crazy. So you got to fit two meters of DNA in a single cell's nucleus. Insane, right? It's like packing your bag for holiday. It just, you can't imagine everything fitting in there. And so how does it work? How do we put this two meter long DNA into this nucleus? There's a process and it's not that complicated. So how it works is we start with DNA, right? This is our DNA. It's super long. Right here it's short, but you got to imagine it's really long. So what's the first thing? So here I'm having the DNA to show that it's long, um, but here I ignore the bases, right? We know there's A, C, T, and G, A, C, T, and G, just like this, very long, but I'm just ignoring it for simplicity. So what happens is we have this long strand of DNA and we got to we gotta somehow make it, we got to roll it up. How do you roll something up very tight? Like if you have a rope, how do you get it really compact? What you do is you need like a small bead or a stone, right? When you have a small stone and you wrap around that stone, you can wrap it really tight. So it's the same thing with DNA. We have this little stone-like thing. And, um, we'll, give it a, we'll, we'll give it a name shortly. But you have this, this kind of thing. It's made up of nine stones. One, two, three, four, five, and you can imagine it's nine, right? So eight of the stones is used to wrap the DNA around. And then this last stone is to put it over that to keep the DNA in place. You can imagine, right? We got these eight stones. We're wrapping the DNA around twice. You can see it's wrapped around twice. And then we have this last stone that we put on top of that to keep it in place. So what do we call these stones? We call them his histones, coincidentally, histones. So we've got these nine histone proteins. Eight of them are used to wrap the DNA around twice. And then the last one, the ninth one, is used to keep it in place. What do we call this whole thing, the DNA plus these nine histone proteins? It has a name, believe it or not. We call it the nucleosome. Okay, so the nucleosome is these nine histone proteins plus the DNA we're wrapping around it. That's a nucleosome. Okay, so now you can imagine we're wrapping the DNA twice around this stone-like structure. So it's getting tighter, but the DNA is too long to wrap all of it around um, one of one set of these, right? One set of these will only allow a small piece of DNA. So you got to form many of these. So you have many of these like stone-like structures, many of these nucleosomes, not just one. One would be way too small. So therefore we, we repeat the process. We wrap it, we form many of these nucleosomes. So here we have one. So here, this is one nucleosome. So this right here represents one of these. So this is a simplified drawing of one of these. So it looks like one histone, but it's actually one of these nucleosomes. Otherwise, it would be too crazy to draw it, okay? Because believe it or not, someone makes this art, and it's pretty hard to make. So we, right here, we have one nucleosome, another nucleosome. So we form many of these nucleosomes as we wrap the DNA around it. And then, guess what? Then we start wrapping the nucleosomes around each other. So the nucleosomes are formed. Now we wrap these nucleosomes around each other. So it gets even tighter. The DNA gets even more compact. So we repeat this process of wrapping things around each other tighter and tighter and tighter until we form um, such a tight structure, which we call what? Guess what we call it? Maybe you can guess. We call it a chromosome. This you've definitely heard of, right? So you wrap your DNA so tight into these nucleosomes, and then you wrap these nucleosomes around each other until the structure is so tight, we call it a chromosome. So that's where the chromosome, that's where a chromosome is really. It's just compact DNA. That's all a chromosome is. So here, let me put some words here to summarize what we just talked about. So DNA, super long, two meters in a single nucleus, super long. So to get it in there, we have to do this process. This process is called supercoiling, supercoiling. You're coiling them so super tight, we call it supercoiling. Okay, so supercoiling is a process of wrapping the DNA super tight into a chromosome. So you can think of it like beads on a string. You've got these beads and the string. And then the last thing I need to um, mention, so this is the chromosome, right? There's these pieces of DNA in between the, the nucleosomes because you form a nucleosome and then there's this linker piece of DNA and then you form the next nucleosome and then the linking DNA, next nucleosome. We call that DNA that links the nucleosomes linker DNA. So I'll label it here. So this right here would be linker DNA, the DNA in between nucleosomes. So anyways, we can think of it like a beads on a string-like idea. You've got the string and you've got a bead, a string bead, and it's super tightly wrapped. 
So that's it. That's what you need to know about how your DNA, how all this stuff is fitting into your holiday bag. Okay, same thing with DNA. It's very, you need to super coil everything, make it super tight, then all your DNA will fit into your nucleus. So it's a very interesting process and that's what you got to know for DNA packaging or DNA storage, however you want to call it.